With more than $43 million in total ticket sales so far for The Color Purple, Oprah Winfrey can now add successful Broadway producer to her credits. And she's bringing a whole new audience to Broadway. What kind of reaction are you getting to this play? Well, people come with their daughters. They come with their friends. They bring, you know, listen, busloads of people. I know of a church that had three busloads of people coming. What is amazing is that there are black people and white people and rich people. And, and they're filling these seats. They're filling the seats. Who the daddy? 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 A remarkable turn of events for a musical that took eight years to come to life. It was producer Scott Sanders who decided to bring The Color Purple to Broadway. I felt, you know, there's a part of Celie in all of us, and I felt that her story had music in its soul. Come on, Celie! At first glance, The Color Purple may not seem like obvious material for a musical. Celie! I'm sorry, Pa. It's about sexual abuse. What you gonna call your baby, You can't do this! Domestic violence, racism. What about your... Homosexuality and another rarity on Broadway, it would require an all black cast. It was an uphill battle to turn the story into a musical. The first hurdle to overcome was the woman who wrote it, Pulitzer Prize winning author Alice Walker. I said I'd love to turn The Color Purple into a musical, and I think she looked at me like I had three heads. <laughs> and, and, um, and she said, What exactly do you mean by that? You write a wonderful book, it becomes a powerful movie and then somebody calls you up and says we ought to make this thing a musical you must have been shocked a musical I was amused <laughs> <laughs> you feel like that. well I, you weren't there when I was amused uh, because I just didn't see it still she agreed and when the musical went into production Scott Sanders invited the editors of Oprah's magazine to a rehearsal they liked what they saw, and they told their boss. My cell phone rang on a Saturday morning. I said, hi, Scott, it's Oprah Winfrey. And I almost dropped the phone. She said, you know, how can I help? Come on up here and gather around. Oprah signed on as one of the producers, I want you to meet and she decided to surprise the cast. For them, it was an incredible break. First of all, I don't mean no disrespect, but Oprah's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she likes to surprise everybody. It was an overwhelming emotional experience for every single person in that room, including her. You will find that all things purple are also all things divine. So Oprah yeah, now divine. has given us just that boost of recognition yeah. nationally, internationally, and um, for me, that was such a comfort and a joy to know that I was a part of something that was just so huge and so special. My Broadway baby, the color purple. In November of last year, Oprah featured the cast on The Oprah Winfrey Show. More than 10 million viewers saw the program. By midnight that night, the telecharge system had blown up. We sold a million dollars worth of tickets in that day. So you're saying that her involvement has been like, what? A blessing. A, a blessing. Major a blessing. blessing. Oprah and I come from a part of the country where we understand certain realities. She's not just telling you about something as if she's an observer. She has lived a life that is as deep and as painful and as joyful and as depthful as any of the characters. And that's why she, I think, really captures the imagination of people. People from all over the country who've never before been to Broadway are buying tickets, packing the house night after night. And something unprecedented is happening. Record numbers of African Americans are in attendance creating a rarity on Broadway, multiracial audiences. It's their families. Yes. It's, it's their, their cousins, their uncles, their, their brothers, aunts, their sisters. Their mothers. You know yeah. what I mean? So I think in that way, yeah, this show resonates unbelievably 
to the African American audience, well and that's why they're coming. Well <laughs> this story is a heart story. It's not a black story. It's not a white story. It's a story that people can identify with. Seely, these are your children, Olivia and Adam. It's more evidence of Oprah's touch, as is the armful of Tony Awards the musical was nominated for this week. Come on. Tony, want one? Well, a Tony would be nice. <laughs> I think a Tony would be great for the cast. I think the cast deserves a Tony. I mean, if it gets a Tony, it will certainly have nothing to do with me. But Oprah does acknowledge that the crowd has come in part because of her. Why? Well, I Do think you it's... think you have this power to bring people to where they don't normally go? Well, I think this, and It's just that after 20 years on the air, I really try to only speak for and about that which is the truth for me. When I do step out for you, it's because I believe it in every fiber of my being. And that is just who I am. That's she is also a woman with a deep faith in God. In the play, Celie feels forsaken. Mm. She says, God is just another God man. God forgot about me. Celie, God, just another man far as I'm concerned. Do you identify with this? Did you no. feel forsaken ever no, by no, God? No. One of the reasons I related to the story so much from the first time reading it is because I have always prayed and spoken to God. You talk to God still today? I still, oh please, yeah. Once a week? No, not once a week. This is the, this Daily? Is, oh, Anne, I live in the space where God is. There is no question that that is why I am where I am and why I have had the success that I've had is because I al allow myself to be guided by that which is greater than myself, than my personality. Is and it that's the, the truth. That's is, the truth. Is it the only thing that you would say is the reason for your great success? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I'm doing the work that my soul came to do. And thank you for bringing and joining me on the birth of one of my most treasured dreams. That work includes donating millions of her own money to help others, clothing children in South Africa, building homes after the devastation of Katrina, and taking on important issues like education and racism. Welcome to the Oprah Winfrey Show! And Oprah Winfrey says even after 20 years at the top, a show watched by 49 million viewers a week, and a personal fortune estimated at $1.3 billion, she's not slowing down like anytime that. soon. Why don't you just put your feet up? Well, some days, Anne, I do just want to take a rest. Oh, gosh, some days I get Why don't so, you put so, your so feet tired, up? tired, exhausted. Uh, I don't put my feet up because when uh, years ago, I went through this whole phase of going back into what it really meant to be a slave in this country. I realized I did not have the right to ever be tired. But there are so many people who've come before me who deserved to be tired, who didn't have the opportunities, who didn't have the access, who didn't have the money, who didn't have the influence, who didn't have the voice. Oprah still wants her voice to be heard. You know, I don't put my feet up because the goal wasn't to make a lot of money. The goal for me is to be used for a purpose greater than I know. And every day, when you're on the air, you affect people that you don't even know. There's a supreme moment of death when you realize, oh, this is what it was for. The whole television show thing, that was about the foundation for it. Because look at the society we live in. Nobody listens to you unless you have some bling, some money, some clout, some access. And so that's what that was for. It was to put me in a position where I could be heard for the ultimate voice of what really matters and I think that's yet to come I really do what is it that you want to feel I feel that I am in the best place for myself now and yet the best is yet to come oh I really do believe that I do feel that there is something stirring you know something something's going on with me that is getting more focused and more headed to the, what is it, supreme moment of destiny. You haven't gotten there no. yet? No. 
just beginning. Well, still to come, they've spent their lives